And I've been a speed coach for the Philadelphia Eagles players since 2004, starting with Eric McCoo, who's also a Penn State alumni. After training Eric for a few weeks, I started training his roommate, Bruce Perry, who's from Philadelphia. And then soon after that, I was training Dexter Wynn and Quentin Michael and Mike Labinjo, Sean Andrews, and Jeremiah Trotter, and of course, eventually Tio. So, as, as I first I didn't believe, I didn't believe that I could ever do this full time, but then the following summer, I get a call from a guy named Pat Kirchy, who used to own the Sixers, who owns three sports training center locations in Bryn Mawr, in Aston, uh, and also in Rosemont, PA. And at first, I didn't believe him, so I actually hung up the phone on him. And shortly after that, I got a call from his general manager, and he said, well, yes, we definitely want to have you, you know, come in and talk about opening up our new facility in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So after opening the facility and getting the business to run smoothly, one of my full-time clients there, Mark Jackson, who's a former Sixer from Philadelphia, former Sixer, traded to the Nets and traded to the Hornets, we were talking about my experiences as a sports trainer. And he says to me, so man, you've been opening up all these businesses for everyone else, why don't you do it for yourself? Of course, my first response was, because my pockets aren't as deep as yours. <laughs> so after talking with him and me and him decided to meet with his business manager and get together a business plan, and before you know it, we started Philadelphia Sports Training Center. And of course, one of my first hires at Summit Sports Training Center was my girlfriend at the time, when I just met a few months prior, who was a former student athlete, but not just any student athlete. She was a two-time academic All-American soccer player from Moravian College. Well, we met in 2005 at a nightclub here in Philadelphia when I was just going to make an appearance to meet with the owner, who's also a friend of mine, and Justina was out with her sister and her sister's friend. And they came down from Bucks County just for like a, a girl's night out. So as I was about to leave, I saw her come in and I immediately was captivated by her eyes. Because the club was so crowded, shoulder to shoulder, that's really all I could see anyway. <laughs> but as I watched her walk across the room, I just couldn't help but stop looking at her. But of course, I also couldn't speak. I was so intimidated. I was so nervous. I ran a little down. But okay, maybe I was scared. <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't want to approach her, but I did want to get to know her. When she left the room, I was thinking, "Oh well, it's time to go." I blew my chance. So I was about to leave here. There, come, there, she, there they come on the dance floor with her with their friends, and her friends a little bit of a flirt. And so shortly, they were surrounded. They were surrounded by guys, and Justina wanted no part of it. She was standing off to the side. She was clutching her purse, and I could tell that she didn't want to be there. So I thought this is a better time now, now than ever, and I was going to leave anyway. So I walked, I approached her, and actually stuck my elbow on someone's shoulder, and I reached out my hand for her. And when she grabbed my hand and I pulled her over, I said to her. You look like you needed to be saved. So that's how me and Justina met. And about a year later, on our one year anniversary, we, we were married in the Bahamas. And that's kind of how the whole story about myself came. So when I thought of this title for the speech, it had a lot to do about the great things that happened in my life, uh, my business, and of course, my wife. And so one thing I'm going to say is I love peace of me. <laughs>